You're coming up for a corner and you chuck the car sideways. And then when I was trying to power slide it to the right, this one being out like this helps self-correct the buggy. Hey, I gotta go teach people how to power slide. This is very important. Spinning tires, huck it in, power slide. Yes, what's up people? So today is the day I want to teach you all how to power slide. And by teach you all how to power slide, I'm going to show you how to do it, how not to do it, things to think of. And I'm doing this for the purpose of you need to know, but not for the purpose of you should try this. Don't try this. Do not do this on the street. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm not being funny. Don't. Because if you start trying to power slide and things on the street, you're an idiot especially if you're trying to learn how to do that there because you're likely going to screw up your car or somebody else or just bad things in general can happen. So I really want you all to know that. And so today by doing it, I'm not going to break out the Dodge Viper. I'm gonna break out the dune buggy. Yes. Now come here, I want you to take a look at it. The reason we're gonna use this today is a vehicle like this is the perfect vehicle to have an insane amount of fun. Literally, this is the most fun vehicle I have ever owned. It makes me feel like I was when I was a kid on a go-kart doing nothing but power sliding and having a great time out there. And everybody's super into drifting. It's a really fun sport and all that. However, for the price of the sets of tires you would burn through in a weekend in drifting, I have a dune buggy that weighs 800 pounds and makes 200 horsepower. It's insanely fast in general and is the perfect thing to power slide and drift and do it off-road. It doesn't matter where it's grass, gravel, dirt, snow, anything. So today what I've done is, I hope it works, I'm testing out a new audio thing so I hope you guys are going to like it. I'm sticking the GoPro right on my helmet on this here for like my forehead cam and uh, I've got the audio wired right up so I'm going to drive it and I'm going to show it. Initially we're just going to do a 90 degree power slide from a dead stop, show you three ways at that, just coming around that and having a nice transition smooth on out. Then we're going to do a pirouette like a full rotation around a small object. Then we're going to bring it back out to a larger area and do a full 360 degree power slide around a full area. Then what I'm going to do is have a little fun. We're going to string it all together. I'm going to transition from grass to pavement to asphalt and all that. And then the other thing we're going to do, we're going to have a little fun as you see with World Rally Challenge racing. And we're going to do kind of like what they call the Scandinavian flick. Where you're coming up for a corner and you chuck the car sideways to get it to come sideways again. So as you're slowing down going sideways, you can then do the last flick and get it to come in like this, get back on the power, whoop, 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 and gone. So we're gonna, I'm gonna have fun with this and hopefully convey some worthwhile information. And I know it's totally a dad like earlier telling you guys not to do this on the street, but I really want to just preface a couple of things and then we're gonna get to the fun. Power sliding well and drifting well is easier when there's less grip. It's easier when you have more horsepower and you need some sort of locking differential. If you have an open differential, as is the case on most street cars, uh, and not a lot of horsepower and a lot of grip, you're just gonna beat the crap out of your car and you're never gonna power slide properly. You're gonna pop the clutch, you're gonna beat the crap out of your drivetrain, and you're gonna spin the inside tire. And you're never gonna have an effective or worthwhile power slide out of it. So like, don't go beating up your cars because you think you guys are gonna be drift kings when you can't. Like, if you, want a, if you want a car that can power slide, not on the street, but on asphalt in a closed circuit area, you need something like a Corvette or a Camaro or a Viper, okay? Rear wheel drive, stick shift, big horsepower engine. And yes, I know there's lots of Japanese cars with turbos and stuff that can do it too, but honestly, that stuff gets kind of expensive. So, let's go have fun with the dune buggy now. I gotta go teach people how to power slide. This is very important. Okay, I should probably put on goggles so I don't die and can see and stuff. Okay, goggles. Dune buggy! This thing up. Hey man! Yeah? It, you, pr you practicing your male stripper dance over there? You're not as cool looking as like Daft Punk in that helmet. Dude, hit the lichen. <laughs> I'm out. Genius. All right, you guys, so I gotta get a little temperature in it before I rip on it. But we can start the initial power slide thing. It's gonna do it here in the gravel. There's nothing around. We're gonna start from a dead stop. So it'd be real easy to just show you case what I got going on. So first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start over here. We're gonna just do a 90 degree left slide, like right off of here. 
and going. So the thing about power sliding is a lot of people are like, I want to go left and power slide left. So they turn the wheel left to start. That's not really what you want to do. Because if you start with the wheel already turning left and from a dead stop and you want to power slide, what will happen is you'll initially understeer and then eventually it'll bite and you might power slide, but by the time you power slide, you'll be way over there. So let's do that as an example. And that's not a real great example because frankly, the dune buggy is so good at doing it. So if you're doing this some on some closed circuit area on asphalt, you want to get the, some motion started, some forward motion to work with. And the reason being is one, you want to get your tires spinning so they have the opportunity to slide sideways. And the reason you want to go straight initially is so that when you have the forward momentum, you can huck the front end into it, and then that'll get the rear end, once the tires are already spinning, to come out and take a set. And that's how you do a really good power slide in a tight area. So we're going to do that. We're going to get it spinning and then do it. So spinning and then huck it in like that. And then I can see you got a nice power slide going on like that. So I just wanted to show you guys that. Let's do it again, and I want to show you guys on a power slide, when you're coming out of a power slide, the key there. And obviously, the car, car is, excuse me, car, car, whatever, buggy is still warming up. So what we're going to do is, you get it, you, you, you start spinning so it can slide, then you get it sideways, you hold the set you want to where you still have the ability to counter steer, okay? You don't want to go to full lock immediately, otherwise, if you go too far, you can't correct it and hold it, right? So you got to plan that ahead, and when you flick it in, the rear end will stick out, and then you got to get ready to catch it on the counter steer. So watch that. I'm going to flick it in, come out to the set and counter steer. I'm going to hold the throttle there, kind of dance with it to find the grip I need to hold the rear throttle. And then when I say come out, I want to go dead straight, but I want to do that sweet magnum PI, like power sliding like this and getting on it. That's where a lot of people screw up on asphalt and high grip because they'll let off too early or they don't have the power to keep the wheels spinning as they transition to forward motion and the car will grab and snap like that. So I want to show you guys that. So we're going to go, we're going to spin the tires, huck it in, power sliding, holding it, I'm holding it, and then you got the grip and can go straight. You got to you got to have the uh, cojones to keep it sliding, to keep the power slide going to be smooth. Because if you're on asphalt and something with a lot of grip, you'll uh, You'll just it'll, you'll start doing tank slappers and such. And frankly, that wasn't a very good power slide. I didn't throw it in very hard. So I'm going to do one last one here, a good one, kind of just textbook 90 degree power slide. So I'm going to spin the tires, spinning tires, huck it in, power slide, holding the throttle. Yeehaw! Now we're going. So that's a pretty good textbook 90 degree power slide, um, and something that is useful to know. So remember that you got to get the tires spinning and hold them spinning before you huck it in enough that you can take a set with the rear tires, and then you gotta be able to hold the throttle and hold it there and know you have it, and then keep tires spinning for you to transition to straight. So now we're gonna do a 180 degree power slide. Let's see how I wanna do that. I'm just gonna spin around to get ready for a 180 degree power slide. I'm gonna start right here. So what I'm gonna do is, I don't know if you can see it, let's see. Uh, I'm gonna go up here and do a real tight 180 degree U-turn. Now I'm gonna start by just going straight. I may do a little counter flick, like a douche, douche, like this, to go to the right and get it going like that. So let's transition this into a 180 degree power slide. Okay, so I'm gonna get it and... Oh, that was terrible. Look at that. Okay, so I'm glad we did that. It understeered. And uh, obviously we got tiny little tires up here. But what I didn't do is I didn't have enough speed and area to do that right. There was not enough actual forward motion of the buggy for me to snap it over to do a 180 degree power slide like that with the area I have. So let's do that better. But on the plus side, it's going to get way more interesting when I get serious about this. Let's get this 180 degree thing going. Here we go. Now it'll do it. All right, you see that? You had to get the forward motion. I had to have enough going on with the rear to do that. I'm glad you guys got to see that. So even I screwed that up. And that's the exact reason why you do not want to try this stuff on the street. Okay? I didn't even do that right. So here we go. Let's get more speed, more forward motion. I got to kind of do a Scandinavian flick. So if we're going to go, let's go to the right this time. So I'm going to, I'm going to turn it to the left to get it to flick out and do a bit of a tank slapper so I can get enough motion of the rear end to do that good 180 slide. So here we go. Let's try it again. Here we go. Okay, that's fascinating. It's not gripping the same going to the left. Let's try this as a power side going to the left. 
instead of the right. I think it does it better. Okay, here we go. This is fascinating. I'm learning about my dune buggy here. Maybe the setups, it might be kind of, it might be kind of weight jacked. Okay, so we're gonna turn this go to the left and see the buggy will grip better that way or grip less better that way. Here we go, let's try it again. There we go. That was a little much. All right, so that's the 180 that wasn't going all that brilliantly. Now let's go into a 360 degree pirouette. If you guys watched the Lycan Hypersport builds, when we first tore down the Porsche Boxster, you saw me doing the pirouettes. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pick an area to pirouette around. It looks like there's a little rock right here, and I'm gonna use that is my center point to pirouette around. I'm gonna go uh, left, because I'm on the left side, it's easier for me to spe see, and we're gonna show that. What I don't wanna do is get into where it understeers. So I'm gonna start from a little bit out and come in, and I wanna get it, uh, take it aside. See how the back end's already out? And I gotta hold that back end out. So you see the rock right there. There's the rock. You can see the counter steering here. Doing some Zinardi donuts. All right, so you guys get the gist of that. Oh, there's a ton of grip right there. That's fascinating. The rear wheels are gripping so well, I still couldn't do that 180 degree. And actually, guys, I started feeling a little bit bad because this was all nice manicured stones, and I'm going to come back here and probably rake this uh, to be respectful uh, for where we're parking the trailers back here. So that's kind of it. The thing about that's cool about doing a pirouette like that is you got to get the rear end set and out there. If it's going, if you don't have the if the rear end's not coming out enough, you need more throttle. It needs to slide and get out more. And if it's coming out too much, you need a little less throttle. But you don't want to let up all the way because then it'll grip and it'll hook and it'll go. So you got to maintain an area of spinning and slip for it to go around. The other thing is counter steering, of course. If it's coming out more and you want it to power slide more, well, then you don't counter steer. But if it's coming out more and you don't want it to power slide more, you just want to hold that angle out there, then you need to counter steer. If I'm going to the left, I need to counter steer to the right. And there's times where if it's kind of going straight and I need to get that thing to go out, I may have to hug it into the left to get it to come out. So that's how that goes. Um, I am going to do another power sliding video because frankly this is not going as textbook as I had hoped. It's a real world. I hope you're at least enjoying it. So let's do this. Let's drive around and have a little bit of fun like I normally do. I want to show you the Scandinavian flick. So let's, let's go do that. We got a little bit of temperature in the oil so I don't feel as bad about getting on it. All right, so here. So what I think I just learned you guys is when I welded the tabs back on it, I think my toe is off and the thing is crabbing a little bit to one side and that's why it's not coming around going to the uh, right as well. So let's uh, go the dark direction. Flick, flick, here's this, and then here comes the last one. Yep, come on baby, let's go. 180 degrees, let's go. Yes sir, that is more textbook. Yeah, we gotta adjust the rear toe on this thing. It's off. Okay, so I think you guys saw that a little bit better. Let's do that one more time. And then let's just go have a little bit of fun. The thing is definitely being stupid. Um, I'm gonna come around this time for more fun. So get it sideways. Here we go, sideways, sideways, sideways. Yeah, I gotta adjust the toe on this thing. It's, it's off. It's definitely power sliding to the left a lot more than the right. Don't hit the car, where'd that come from? Okay, there's the first flex, second. All right, you guys. I'm gonna use this as an opportunity to show you why car setup is important. This is kind of ticking me off. All right. So, real world. The buggy is not performing as it should at speed. And with what I'm doing, I can't afford for it not to be the way it should. And this is the reason why it's darn important for car setup. So, the fronts are kind of irrelevant. They don't do a whole lot. The rear is everything because the whole car is back here. The way it's set up right now, it's kind of set up for street. It's got a little bit of positive camber because it's got swing arms. So like full camber gain, it goes up and down. Don't worry about that so much. I think the problem right now is toe. Let me turn a steering wheel on the front straight. It's crabbing to one side. So imagine an airplane that you're trying to crab in for a landing where the horizontal stabilizer is off and it's crabbing anyway. Oh yeah, there's the problem. Okay, so 
I need to readjust this. I, I didn't do it. I uh, fixed this thing by rewelding this, and frankly, I never adjusted toe. This one is pointed dead straight, as it is from sidewall to sidewall, and it goes right to this tire. However, the one on the right is towed out. So if I gun side it from sidewall to sidewall, it's hitting about here. Because the rear, rear tire, so here's, here's the tire. So when you power slide, this is what's going on. This one's kicked out a little bit. So the reason why it's power sliding so much easier to the left and not well to the right is when it goes to the left, this is wanting to sear it out that way. And then when I was trying to power slide it to the right, this one being out like this helps self-correct the buggy. So that's what's going on. Uh, it's not a really good excuse and any race drivers can just shut up and drive what you got. So I'm glad we got out and checked this out because the thing is not driving, handling, shall I say, the way I was custom. So let's do this. I'll do another video in the future with a car or cart or buggy that's properly set up. And today, let's just have a little fun. So I'm just gonna string it together, try not to do something stupid, but uh, it's pretty good. I am noticing that the gravel back here, since it rained yesterday, has a little more grip. And since it rained yesterday, the grass is really slick, so it has less grip. So let's just have a little bit of fun. The other thing about this dune buggy, I'll be perfectly honest, if I hit something, there's not exactly impact protection. All right, so let's have some fun. I want to be sideways just for fun. <laughs> Only rear brakes, got to keep that in mind. Yeah, see that? I wanted to slide with the L tail end out. Yes, sir. Oh, baby. Also, I got to be honest, this stupid helmet is hitting the bars and throwing me off. It's throwing me off my rhythm. <laughs> Into the flick. Yes, flick, baby, flick. Yes. I gotta adjust that toe. It's all kinds of wonky. <laughs> Here we go. Yes, sir. Okay, let's go on the pavement. That'll be fun, huh? Transition to pavement. I have got to adjust this thing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not correcting well from power sides to the left. And I lost my seat belts. <laughs> it's all kinds of screwed up. Oh man, we gotta adjust this thing, you guys. It's trying to kill me. The seat belt's coming off after it's forcing a power slide. Oh jeez. Stop trying to kill me, dude buggy. All right, all right. <laughs> all right, all right. So I think that's going to be it for today, you guys. I apologize. I need to adjust the toe on this. It's just not acting right. But I hope you had a little fun riding along, got some ideas, and I promise I'll do a better video next time. I didn't really exactly, um, I didn't exactly practice doing a tutorial on it. And with the toe out being wrong in the rear, it's not, it's not good right now, you guys. Anyway, discretion is a better part of valor. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Remember that when you are wanting to power slide. All right, see you guys next time.